When you look at this Minecraft screenshot, what is the first thing that comes to mind? If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you might say something along the lines of Kasai, you should enable your resource and shader pack again. But what if I told you this is not a screenshot at all? Instead, it is a complete 3D map of my Minecraft world. All the terrain that has been generated inside of my Minecraft server is viewable inside of this 3D map. And I can zoom in, zoom out, rotate all I want. And it is a live map, so I can even find my own location. Isn't that amazing? Well, yes. Yes, it is. And it is all possible for free with an incredible Minecraft plugin called Blue Map. And today, I'm going to show you how to install it and how it all works. I do want to ask you to double check if you're actually subscribed as 90% of my daily viewers is still not, which is a massive percentage. Pressing the button is 100% free though, and you would help me out so much if you did. So the first step to getting Blue Map working on your Minecraft server is downloading it from SpigotMC. Now, just like its competitor DyneMap, Blue Map can be downloaded for 100% free, which is incredible. It is such a cool and powerful plugin, and to see plugins like this being distributed for free is just awesome. So what you want to do is simply click on download now and after that you want to drag it into the plugins folder of your Minecraft server. Then give your server a quick little restart. And after a while you should see a message like this appear in your console. Blue map is missing important resources. You must accept the required file download in order for blue map to work. Now if you see this message too, don't you worry. We're gonna fix it all up. So what you want to do is go to your Minecraft server directory. Then you want to locate your plugins folder and after that a new blue map folder should have appeared. Now inside of the blue map folder we want to look for a file called core.conf. In other words core.config. Now inside of this file the only thing we want to change here is on line 12 we want to accept the download. After all, that is what the console was complaining about. So we're just going to change this false to true and after that, save the content. Now, after changing that setting, you want to exit out the file and then we want to look for the file that's called webserver.config. And in there, we want to look for the port settings. So for me, it is on line 18 the port. And this is really important. Because BlueMap, just like DyneMap, is a web application that you access through your web browser, you need a second port available on your Minecraft server to actually access that application. Now, most Minecraft server hosting providers offer an extra port like this. I'm hosting my Minecraft server at Alienhost, who, by the way, is a partner of my channel. And if you want to check them out for yourself, I will leave a link to their website down below. And also, don't forget to use code KASASARA at checkout for a 20% off your first month. But if you are on Alienhost, on the left, there will be a tab called Network. And when you click on there, you can see that currently I have two ports available. This is my primary port. In other words, this is the port that I use to access this Minecraft server. If I type in this hostname plus this port inside of Minecraft, I will end up in my server. Now, this is my second allocation. In other words, my second available port that I can use for other stuff. Like, for example, Kaiser MC, or in this case, Blue Map. Now, you can just create a new allocation by literally clicking on Create Allocation, and you will get an additional one. The amount of allocations you have available, of course, depends on where you are hosting your Minecraft server and which plan you have. But overall, most hosting providers should have an option like this. Now, this port number here, that one is really important because it is the port number that we're going to need to access this web application. So I'm simply going to copy it. Then I'm going back to the web server dot config file and here where it says ports i'm gonna replace the 8100 with the allocation that i have available which in my case is this one now we're simply gonna save content again and after doing that you once again want to give your server a quick little restart now upon booting your server again you should see something in the lines of this blue map is loading textures it is loading resources it is loading the worlds nether and everything and then eventually it 
should say web server started. And when that is what it says, you are good to go. So now to access your web application, you want to copy your Minecraft server IP or host name. You can of course always ping a host name if you just want to know the IP address. But in this case, the host name will do. So I'm going to copy the host name and I'm going to paste it in my browser like this. Now, of course, we do still need to change out the ports. So this is the port required for joining my Minecraft server. But this is the port that I just filled in to the web server config file. And when I now press enter, you can see, boom, we got a map and it's working perfectly. So this map is awesome. You can zoom in and zoom out all you want. I'm just doing this with my scroll wheel. But when I use my right mouse button, I can move around in 3D. So it is actually a 3D space. It is a complete 3D map that you can move around in, zoom in, zoom out, do anything that you desire. And everything that's close to you is fully rendered. So ignoring the background there, everything here looks like regular Minecraft. This could just be a Minecraft screenshot, but it's not. Now, of course, you have many more options available here in the top left and the top right. So I can, for example, make it night or day. When I flick this switch, it will be nighttime. Also super impressive, you can even see which blocks are light sources. So this lava over here, you can see that it is actually emitting light, which you might be like, Kasai, of course you can see that. But this is a map. <laughs> This is just an online map. And the fact that you can see that here is awesome. Now, if the whole 3D map thing is not really for you, you can, of course, also get a 2D map by clicking on this flat view button. And now we get something that, of course, very much reminds us of DyneMap. For those who are curious, DyneMap is another Minecraft plugin that does something similar like this, but without the whole 3D map thing. It does have some other side views that this plugin doesn't seem to have. Though, to be fair, with this 3D map, a side perspective like this is kind of useless. Still though, if you want to check out DyneMap, I have made a video and I will leave it linked as a card so you can check it out for yourself. So this is the top view, the flat view, and you can just go somewhere, find something, and after that you can decide, nah, I want it 3D, and bam, there you go. You can just see the change happen from 2D, it becomes 3D, and you can just start looking around. It is incredible. Now let me make it one step crazier for you. There is a third option, spectator mode. And when you click on spectator mode, you are in free flight. It is basically like you're a character in game. You guys can't see it, but I'm currently flying around using just WASD. When I click on space, I'll go up. When I click on shift, I will go down. It is like I'm actually inside of spectator mode in Minecraft, but I'm not. It is all a 3D map. It even goes so far that when I scroll up on my scroll wheel, I will go quicker, just like in spectator mode. It is actually crazy how they made this, but they did. Now, you might be like, this has to be it. Well, no, there's more. Something you can also get is a player list, which will show all the players currently online in the server. Currently, there are none because I'm friendless. But if you do have a public server or anything like that, then you can see exactly who is currently online and where they are. And then there is the map list. So when we click on there, we can switch between a map of the overworld, nether and end. So when I go to the nether, for example, currently you will only see a very, very small cube. That is because I've never been to the nether before. I've never loaded in nether terrain in this entire server. So naturally, it is only going to show a very small part. But when I go to the nether and explore for a while, you will see that eventually a much bigger chunk of the map will actually appear. Now, this is something very important to keep in mind and something that I wasn't very clear about inside of my DyneMap video. Only terrain that has actually been generated can appear on this map. Now, when will terrain generate? Well, terrain will generate when you go there. So all the places I'm now in, that terrain has been generated. And when I fly to a place in the world where nobody has ever been, it will be generated right before I get there. So that it feels like a seamless experience for the player, but the server doesn't have to immediately generate the entire world. Because big parts of the world you will probably never visit. You can also see that this terrain is being freshly 
actually generated by the lava that is flowing down from the ceiling. That means the source block of this lava, which is up there, has only just spawned in. In fact, it spawned in when I got there. That means that over time, your blue map will expand and it will become bigger and bigger the more terrain people will actually discover on your server. Now, there is a little life hack and it is called Chunky. Now, Chunky is a Minecraft plugin and also a mod, by the way, that can pre-generate your Minecraft world. So what it essentially does is generate Minecraft world for you, even though no player has ever been there. Now, by doing that, you can make it so that a much bigger part of the world actually appears on your blue map. But you do have to keep something in mind. And that is, the more of your world has been generated, the bigger the file size of your world will be. Now, if you have close to infinite storage, you might not really care. But let's say you only have 50 gigabytes of storage available. Do you really want to spend half of that on pre-generating a big part of your world just so that people can see it on blue map? Because for the record, a lot of this terrain that you generate and a lot of the terrain that will appear on blue map, nobody is gonna ever discover. Like Minecraft worlds are so immensely big, not every single block and not every single biome is actually gonna be touched. So do keep in mind that while Chunky is a great solution, it is a great life hack if you want a certain area of your server to be fully generated. It also eats away your storage pretty quickly. Anyway, that is gonna be it for today. I wanna thank you so much for watching. Do make sure to double check if you're actually subscribed to my channel as such a big part of my daily viewers is still not. It is just a single click and you would help me out so much. Also, don't forget to join my Discord server. Link can be found down below. And thank you so much to my channel members for the incredible support. You guys are truly legends. I love you guys. You know that. And then I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.